Hello all, welcome back to Career with Vasant YouTube channel. My name is Vasant. I hope you all doing well. So this is a series as you all know where I'm discussing a company interview question and answer. So there are a lot of my followers and my friends who are attending various different company interview. And once after the interview, a lot of them share their feedback over LinkedIn or to me personally. So in this series, basically I'm going to list down all the important questions that was discussed in the interview. And with my experience of giving and taking interview, also reading from different blogs, if I know some questions, I'm going to add them. So this interview is specifically for the Capgemini, where uh, this is at, again a mid-level engineer, three to five years of experience uh, engineer specifically on the react js and javascript related interview where i'm going to discuss all the questions that was most recently asked so this video is recorded on june 16th 2024 the where the interview happened just one week back so all the questions that are most recently asked i'm going to discuss in this particular video so if you're preparing for capgem capgemini interview for front end please watch this video before attending okay now without wasting further time let's get started question number one what is react Okay, so uh, despite this question looks very simple and very straightforward, there are little variations to it. I'm, I'm trying to explain that in depth. So React, in a very simple words, is a JavaScript library for building the user interfaces, which is, I think most of you are aware of that. So it's not a framework, it's a library actually. So imagine building a UI like Lego sets. Okay, so I thought of explaining about React a little bit uh, in depth by taking the help of uh, uh, a diagram. Uh, by taking the help of a simple diagram. So if you look at this diagram, you see a house here. This particular house is built using the help of a Lego boards. I think most of you are aware of Lego boards, that small plastic boxes which you keep one on top of another to form a complete house. So if you observe here, if a, a developer who built this, developer he isn't, isn't the one who manufactured it. If you have manufactured one of these yellow block, whatever you see here, so with this itself, they were able to basically configure, use, reuse that bricks to build this entire block. Similar way, if they would have manufactured one of this brown, one of this brown brick, okay, they will be able to uh, uh, assemble all these brown bricks to form this particular shape. Same goes for this gray, uh, gray tile as well, correct? So in, in simple words, where I'm coming from is, if you're... If you're building some block that can be totally reusable to build a very beautiful UI. That's what React in simple words does. It's a reusable li library for building user interfaces where you can create components and those components can be used across multiple different uh, screens of yours to uh, build whatever the UI you're looking for. Okay, Is React the only such uh, library or framework? No. Uh, that's not the only library there is angular is there there is also a view there are multiple other javascript frameworks react has become just popular okay now the interview might ask a cross question what is the difference between react and react js okay so react and react js has no difference okay so they are uh, they are the same basically a lot of people think like react is a library and uh, react js is built on top of it it is not that way react and react js can be used interchangeably okay so the question number two let's go to question number two why to use react over other framework okay so this is also another very important question you should, should aware about uh, or why you should go with a react it's not about alone react just think in terms like anytime whenever you're using any framework or any library you need to know like why only that one why not something else okay so in this case react has performance composability and jx what do you mean by performance so react excels at handling dynamic us with minimal re-renders keeping your app fast and snappy uh, this is like partially agreeable like a lot of these answers have got from official documentation yeah react excel as dynamic ui you could build a very beautiful ui uh, with minimal re-renders i'm not pretty sure like this all depends on like basically how you are composing your components but whenever you explain the advantage sure this is the point performance composability react component promotes code reusability making development fast and easier and to maintain that's what i explained with the help of that lego board where you can use one lego board and you can use it across all the different uh, screens correct what one yellow color brick you can build the entire wall same way consider with one header component you can keep the header component across like 10 different pages that's the advantage jsx undoubtedly the uh, thing that you need to be aware jsx syntax blends javascript html making ui certain uh, creation intuitive for developers yes definitely combining J javascript and html things into one definitely is an advantage large community most of the time this particular point is ignored but large community is one of the important point of having a react or any other open source framework because the community is what matters in your day-to-day -day activity i think over a period this trend might go away because of the generative ai where you don't need a lot of community for the support where gen ai can help you in a lot of aspects but right now at least the community support for open source library is very very important okay now before i go to the next question uh, like 
I told like my channel is purely dedicated for intro preparation and career development into front end and career development. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I'm not going to talk anything unnecessary in the channel. So subscribe to my channel, like the video. That's going to help me get more impressions during the video. Watching the video, if you like, I'm going to get more impression. More impression means more views. That will help me to create more good content. So please support. All the questions that I'm discussing here will be available either on my GitHub repository or on my website careerwithwasan.com. or on the new book that i'm writing so everything will be available for you for free okay don't worry all of this whatever the link i put in the description section there you will see it okay now let's go to question number 3 very very important question okay what is error boundary in react give me an example okay so error boundary is something that is used imagine you are building a complex react application with a multiple components everything works smoothly until suddenly an error crashes the entire app blank screen for user this is where the error bound is coming as a life saver like in a very simple word let's say you have an object with first name and last name you are doing like object dot first name but object dot first name is not defined for some reason api did not send that response then your app should not crash okay that is as simple as to ensure that app is not crashing you can use a error boundary okay i've given i wrote a very simple example actually here okay i'm just zooming out so that you could see the entire thing together once so i have an error boundary component i have a child component i have a app component So the child component is wrapped inside the error component. Okay, in child component, if you see inside the user effect itself, I'm throwing an error. Nobody does this in the actual code directly. Actually, they'll be doing something, and if that has gone wrong, you'll be throwing an error. And then we have written div. This is a child component we are returning. As you're throwing an exception here, if you would have not handled this error, you would have got a the screen would have gone blank. Correct. But here, what you are doing inside the error boundary component. Okay. So you are basically checking if there is any error. okay so here you are handling the error and if you see any error then basically you are render you are rendering that error and instead if there is no error only then you are basically showing the children component okay so into the error boundary you are already passing a children component children component has returned the error so because as it's an error it is showing the error otherwise it would have rendered the children component okay you could also handle the error in a much more efficient way this is very simple example but in industry that is very complicated examples also handled with help of error boundary Now the question is, Basant, is it a right uh, thing to use error boundary? My advice: you should not use error boundary. A lot of people may not like what I'm saying, but don't try to depend on a generic error flow. You try to define a specific error flow for all the possibilities. Okay, for example, you are in a component X, and that component is a screen, and for some reason the screen can go wrong. handle all the possibilities correct let's say api response do not come what you will do api response came but it is an empty then what you will do so all this information actually you can handle and show the relevant errors than going for error boundary i personally have not used error boundaries in most of my projects so i recommend people not to use error boundary try to have a very specific error than having a generic error okay now let's go to question number 4 again let me zoom in question number 4 what is anchor tag and why to use it okay so anchor tag i think most of you are aware anchor tag is used for link the web world basically it is used for the creating the hyperlinks let's say from page 1 you need to go to page 2 so then you are creating a link between page 1 and page 2 anchor tag is used for that you are going to see example in the next question okay let's go to question number 5 what is the difference between es lint and just okay if you are somebody who is starting up the ui development and you are not a part of any good organization good organization here i mean some organization that has so much time for documenting a code and keeping the code clean if you are there is some startup where making a things is much important for you then probably you might have not encountered es lint and just so this is very very important whenever a project goes out of certain scale okay es lint basically this you can consider like a grammar police so es lint basically let's say you wrote on one written one function then you decide to give like 10 lines of gap and then you return the second function why that much line is required and let's say you are giving us double inverted comma for a string in some places you are giving a single inverted comma for a string in some places correct okay? so these are all the things that you are not maintaining a proper grammar grammar across the project if you are using the es lint it will take care and it will give you a proper linting or proper grammar for the entire code it also uh, you could also use for the spelling checks you could also use for the import statement let's say you have like 20 imports where let's say three import statements are actually importing the different things from the same library instead of keeping like three differently you can call it into one line correct all of this can be handled actually using the help of es lint just i think some of you definitely aware it's a testing warrior or a testing library so which is used for basically testing your application let's say you have a component that get rendered when a particular condition is met you could mock that condition and ensure whether that screen is rendered or not with the help of the just so that is the difference between just and es lint okay question number 6 how to make image clickable in react js it's a very important interview question because by default only text are clickable not the images correct you can make a text clickable by the help of ahref tag okay anchor tag so here what you will be doing is you will use a image 
and you will use a href property of the image whenever you are using the href hyperlink or hyper reference so with which you will be able to go to a particular website okay that's what happening in the question number 6 or uh, how to make image clickable okay let's go to question number 7 what is redux and its usage okay i tried explaining this very much in deep in detail in my infosys interview for front end developer i'm going to attach that video in the screen also in the description section i have explained that with the help of a good graphic and the drawing on that particular graphic so i'm going to put that description please go ahead and check that video i'm going to put a specific portion or specific timing where i've created that in the video and you can watch that or video as well if you are preparing for infosys interview or in general if you are preparing for any front end developer interview okay so question number 7 i'm skipping let's go to question number 8 differentiate between display none versus visibility hidden where very very important interview code topic okay so let's say in css here is in display none versus visibility hidden what is the difference difference is display none removes the element from the document flow entirely so for example you have a paragraph tag followed by a h1 tag so this h1 tag if you make it as display none that h1 tag will not be loaded itself onto the ui okay removes the element from the document flow entirely so there is no h1 tag visibility if you make it like hidden the element will be still occupy the space in the layout it is actually there on the screen but it's not just not visible that is a difference so visibility hidden actually loads the element display none will not load the element at all so when to use what let's say you want a particular element for sure any time in the flow then you're going to use for the display none visibility hidden is like until a particular condition is met if you are not going to show a particular thing then you should go for the visibility hidden that is a difference so display none you are not showing that for that flow at all use display none if you are going to show a particular thing on a condition basis then go for the visibility hidden okay so there are the top 8 question that was asked uh, for the in the recent uh, capgemini interview for 3 to 5 years range of experience this is for the round 1 I I I am actually want to make another video for the round two as well. If you're interested for this video, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to make what was asked in the round two in the Cap Gemini interview. Okay, I'm sure you like the video. If you like the video, please like the video on my YouTube channel. Comment whatever you felt honestly. I want to bring more such interview question and answer from which different interviews. So if you recently attended any interview and your questions documented, please put in the comment section. That will be helpful for me to make a video. and it's not about just a company related question i have so many other content on my youtube channel i have 18 plus uh, mock interviews on my youtube channel which various different experience fresher mid range senior where very interesting questions are asked and you can you get to learn a lot by watching a mock interview link to that video is again in the description section i have a complete javascript uh, interview preparation video 36 plus videos are there that also you can watch complete react js interview preparation videos are there where i explain snippet driven conceptual questions that link is also in the description section please go ahead and check i have a mang preparation video i also have dsa related videos i also have webinars that are recorded so much good content for a fresher or front end developer to prepare for the interview all that i'm going to keep in the description section please well utilize this i'm also active content creator on linkedin lot of information that i can put youtube on a day to day basis i'm be putting on the linkedin please follow me on linkedin link is again in the description section follow my um, like uh, clone my github repositories where i put all these questions and uh, do not forget to start it medium also i write content actively you can follow me on medium thank you so much for watching catch you in the next video